Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai. And today we're going to be repotting and refining my cedar of Lebanon. So this is the cedar of Lebanon that we're going to be working on in this video today. This tree was actually gifted to me by Attila Chintalan from Fangorn Bonsai. We worked on this tree in his place in a video last year and we wired the branches into a basic triangular shape and we also created this nice deadwood feature on the top. I did feel that this tree was a little bit too tall for the thickness of the trunk. The best time to repot the cedar of Lebanon is from early spring to early summer. And the reason behind this is you want to allow enough time after the repot for the tree to establish itself in a pot so that whenever winter comes around the roots aren't vulnerable to freezing and a good sign that it is time to repot is if you look closely at the needles of the tree you will see some buds beginning to swell and that's a really good sign that the energy and sap has began to flow up from the roots into the top part of the tree. The bonsai tools that I will be using in this video today are a chopstick, some root pruning shears, root cutters, wire cutters, jean pliers, a root hook and a root rake. And as always, if you're just getting started in bonsai, you don't need all these tools. You can get by with just an ordinary pair of garden scissors. You don't need a bonsai root rake specifically. You could use just an ordinary garden rake. Chopsticks are pretty easy to come by. Just whatever tools you have at your disposal. You just want to make sure that whenever you are cutting something on a tree, that the blades are clean and sharp. Clean because you don't want to introduce any bacterial or fungal infections to your tree and you want them sharp because a sharper pair of scissors will give you a cleaner cut and clean cuts heal so much faster and more efficiently than a blunt cut that was sort of squashed by a dull pair of scissors. So I'm going to start by just taking this tree out of the pot. That came out pretty easily. So I'm just going to start by taking a chopstick and raking away some of the soil on the top level here just to see what's going on underneath the top layer because oftentimes garden centers and nurseries will plant trees deeper than they need to be. And whenever you dig down like this, more often than not, you'll find a nice looking nabari. And whenever you rake at roots like this, you always want to work outward from the trunk. You don't want to be dragging and pulling the chopstick or rake or whatever you're using around like this because that will tear through any roots that's growing laterally. And they're roots we really want to keep. And I can actually see here under the top layer of soil, there is a nice thick root that's already a part of a good nabari. So I'm just gonna keep rotating the tree just to ensure that I'm working outward from the trunk. It can be tempting to reach around and try and do this. I like to work towards myself. So let's turn the tree. And all I'm doing here as I wreck into the soil and work my way down is just loosening up the old soil. I don't want to tear through or cut any roots just yet. And that's the reason why I'm using this chopstick. I want to be very gentle on the roots. And I find using wooden tools like this wooden chopstick are just a little bit more gentle on the roots than something like this metal root rake that has quite a sharp point on it. Now just turning the tree over on its side, I'm going to begin to work on the underside of the root ball. Again, just loosening up the old soil. The soil here is quite stony and I can actually see, yeah, there's pieces of pumice in there, which is giving it good drainage and aeration in the roots, which is probably why we see so many roots down here. I'm gonna rotate the tree again from the middle of the base of the tree, working outward from the center. And this just helps loosen all the old soil up. Look, that's just really falling apart. Wow, I find that whenever you're repotting a tree also, the soil does come away a lot easier if you leave it to slightly dry out. If it's damp and wet, it can be a little bit more awkward. So if you know you're gonna be repotting a tree, give it a few days to dry out in somewhere that's sheltered, even if it's raining. That way, when you come around to repot it, the job will be so much easier. If it is a hot or windy day where you are, I do recommend keeping a spray bottle of water nearby just to mist the roots so they don't dry out. And now due to the nature of the cedar of Lebanon, I'm not going to be completely bare rooting this tree today or removing a whole lot of roots. The cedar of Lebanon doesn't really like their roots to be pruned really drastically like you would a maple. You almost want to treat this just like you would a juniper or a pine. So I just removed a little bit more extra soil down here so that I can really loosen up the roots and see the ones that are a little bit too long. Again, I don't want to remove too many roots, but I am going to remove these ones that's just a little bit extra long. So I'm going to cut along here. This is the first repot this tree is getting since it came from a garden center. So don't expect the first repot of any of your trees to look really good in terms of the nibari or root flare. 
and root structure of your bonsai. What we're doing today is just taking it a little step further in the right direction. And speaking of directions, we're now going to print off any roots that are just a little too thick, like this one here. As you can see, the root came out, created a nice nibari, and then just as it hit the side of the pot, it went straight down. So just at that point, as it goes straight down, I'm gonna cut it there. Just a little root. Any of these ones that's also growing straight up, we can get rid of. I am reminding myself, I don't want to go too crazy on the roots this year. So for that reason, maybe just one more root. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. When it comes to pot selection, this is the part I feel that beginners can get a little bit carried away when it comes to, you know, you've just styled a tree, you wanna get it into a new pot. You go, oh, this would look so good in a really small pot. Let's cut the roots, prune it, try and cram it into that small pot so it looks like, you know, a really nice bonsai. And I myself, when I got started in bonsai, have made this mistake. It's really common because you wanna see a quick result right away. But I do advise going for the delayed gratification method of waiting and putting it into a larger bonsai training pot where the roots have lots of room to grow, get healthy, develop lots of fine fibrous roots that will benefit the health of the tree before later and gradually incrementally year by year reducing the roots down and down and down so there's lots of root density that the tree would then survive happily in a small pot like this. So remember bonsai is all about patience that's why I'm going to stick it into this pot. Of course if you wish to I think even more beneficial would be a pond basket that has lots of holes around the sides that would give lots of oxygen and even more aeration to the roots but I've used all my pond baskets I'm waiting for another order to arrive so for today this one's going into this nice rectangular bonsai training pot before we put the tree into the pot we first need to prepare the pot so I'm going to flip this over and now I'm taking some two millimeter aluminium bonsai wire I'm just going to take some and measure a length of how much wire I'm going to need say this much then I'll just cut that with the wire cutters so I'll make two of these lengths you can just use the other wire as a guide so you don't have to measure it up again and i want this to be really stable in the pot i'm going to do two across this way and one across that way these training pots already have wire holes in them and mesh holes so the bonsai soil doesn't fall out putting wire in that way bending it down and as it gets to this next hole i'm just holding it where my hand is and then lifting it up getting the gin pliers and making a 90 degree bend that way whenever I put it in and pull, the wire sits nice and flush against the pot. And now the soil mix that I'm using in this video today is a mix of pumice, academa, lava rock and zeolite. And as you can see here, I've just got this ordinary kitchen sieve that I use to put the soil into as I use it in small batches. And this just helps me sieve out the fine particles before I use it. And then after it's sieved there, it goes into this sieved scoop. So it's sieved once more before it goes into the pot. And now what you want to do in the pot is create a small mountain in the middle. Just like that, it's okay if it's fairly high, it will be squashed down in a moment. So now as we take the tree and sit it on, because we made the mountain, there isn't going to be an air gap underneath. So now really is a good time to consider the planting angle of the bonsai. Do you want it to sit more this way, this way, forward, tilted back? For this particular tree, this is the front with the foliage on the left and the deadwood part on the right. So whenever I plant it in here, I'm keeping that in mind so I can show off all the best parts of the tree. Now we're just going to take the wire that we put up through the bottom of the pot and wire it in. And I'm just taking care not to squash any roots as we do this. I'm going to use the gin pliers to just tighten it in the pot. So as you grab the twist, you want to pull up and twist, grab it again, pull up and twist. Now you don't want it too tight where it's digging into the roots, but you want it just tight enough to hold it. If I grab the tree now and lift it, the pot comes along with it. That's a good sign that this is really secure in the pot. I'm going to take some sphagnum moss and put this into some areas around the root ball. And this sphagnum moss helps promote lots of fine fibrous roots. And you may think the sphagnum moss not keep the soil too wet. It does to some extent, but I will manage how I water this tree. Sphagnum moss is also antifungal and antibacterial, which will also help keep the roots in a really nice condition. And now after that, I'm going to top up the rest of this pot with our bonsai soil.
taking a chopstick. Now I'm going to just work the soil into all of the air gaps. And you may be wondering, why do we wire trees into a pot and why do we try and get out all the air gaps like this? We wire the tree into the pot just so the tree remains stable. As this tree now begins to send out small new roots, if it's windy, there will be a slight wobble in the tree which will hinder new roots from forming. And it's also done as a safety precaution if the tree falls over accidentally, it doesn't fall out of the pot and it's easier to fix. And the reason why we want to work out all the air gaps is because essentially anywhere in the soil where there's air, that's where water cannot reach. So that's why it's really important to do this. You may also be looking at this and thinking, Adam, you didn't plant the tree right. This part of the root ball is above the soil. What's the deal here? Because I've changed the planting angle, it's okay for some of the root ball to stick above the soil like this. Eventually, I will work this part of the root ball down to being flush with the pot. But just as it is right now, it's not safe to cut off all of this. I would rather keep this part let all the roots around the pot fill out, then come back later and slowly reduce the height of this part. Changing the planting angle on a bonsai can be a little bit tricky like this, but just small steps and you will get there. Just gonna cut off some of these thinner ones that's dry anyways. And in time, even this part will naturally dry out from the sun during the summer and growing season, and they may die off on their own. There is one glaring problem with this tree and that is right here. As you can see, the trunk is thinner. Personally, I don't think air layering the tree at this height would look good after it's been air layered off and that's the bottom of the tree. I just feel that from this point, these branches are now too low in the tree. So for that reason, I'm not going to air layer this tree. Instead, I'm going to opt for a different method and that is to do slices on the bottom of this tree just with a blade in the hopes to get callus tissue that will thicken that part of the trunk over time and we can just keep coming back year after year doing little slices here and there until it reaches the desired thickness to give it a good taper from thick to thin but I'm not going to do it this year my main priority right now is to ensure this tree survives this repot I'll come back next year and do some slices here maybe redesign the branches and improve the overall structure that way there is one small thing that I'm going to do now and that is to whiten this deadwood part with some lime sulfur. Just as a safety precaution when it comes to working with lime sulfur, you don't wanna get this on your skin and it's really not good if it gets in your eyes. So you wanna wear gloves and eye protection. You also wanna work with it in a well-ventilated area. I'm doing it outdoors. It can stain your clothes, so wear something over if you wish to. I'm just wearing this old hoodie. And you wanna make sure you handle any spillages with care. I don't like to use my lime sulfur directly out of the container as it can introduce some contaminants and oxidize the lime sulfur pretty quickly. So I'm gonna pour it into this little beaker here. This just makes it a little bit easier to manage. And this is my own lime sulfur that I have made in a previous video. If you'd like to see that, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. Now, just before I work on this area of the tree, I'm just painting on some water, just to wet the wood before I apply the lime sulfur. I'm not spraying on some water because if I spray it on the outside here and I put the lime sulfur on, it will spread and then it will be on the outside part. So I'm just detailing it with some water first. Now I'm coming in with the lime sulfur, just dipping my paintbrush in, and I'm gonna slowly and carefully paint this on here. I really want to ensure that I get a nice clean edge on this so I don't touch any of the life tissue of the tree. It's unlikely that it will harm the tissue of the tree. It'll just turn it white and look a little bit out of place. And the whole point here is to make the dead wood stand out. So if you have a nice clean line, it will emphasize the distinction between the live part and the dead part. Adding lime sulfur to dead wood like this not only whitens it for the aesthetic appeal, but it also preserves the wood so it doesn't rot and it lasts many more years.
And on that, I'm going to end off this video right here. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like in this video. It really helps out the channel a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And please let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Perhaps there's something you would have done differently with this tree. I'm always open to new and different ideas in bonsai. If you would like to support me and the things that I do on this channel, hit the thanks button down below. And if you'd like to stay updated on all the things that I do off camera, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Notion Bonsai and you'll be able to see all the things that I do on there. But on that, thank you so very much for watching.